Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel and in today's episode we're going to be looking at the Mark II Ford Escort van. Hello and welcome back. Now if you're new to Quarterlight, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. So, interested in car brochures or indeed just interested in looking back at cars gone by please do consider subscribing it is all completely free now back to today's episode like we said at the start it's going to be this the ford escort van the mark ii van and this is a, an episode that was first aired on a tuesday so we call those take two tuesdays because we actually looked at this particular brochure over two years ago when quartz light was just starting out we're now at the point where I think we can make them a little bit better. So that's what we're doing. So let's throw it on the board and talk a bit a bit more about it. So this is today's brochure. And it's one of my favourite brochures actually for a few reasons. And that's what Take Two Tuesday is all about. It's picking some of my favourite brochures that could probably do a little bit better now. Quarter Light is growing up. Um, it's one of my favourites for a few reasons. A... The photography in it's really nice. 70s is very much an era I really like cars from that era as well. Um, but also it comes with this actually rather lovely uh, colour guide that comes with it. Both brochure and colour guide are from March 1975. Not too often you get a sort of nice colour guide with these brochures. You know, they're often lost of course or indeed never even came with them so that's nice to see we'll certainly have a look at the colors at the end of this video it's also kind of like introducing the mark ii escort van as well it says here the new ford escort van will deliver the goods although we all know the mark ii escort van really wasn't much more than the mark one really in fact i would say it's a Mark 1 Escort van that they've just updated slightly. Different from 10 to kind of like match it in with the now Mark 2 Ford Escort saloons. And they kind of like updated the interior to match the Mark 2s as well. But pretty much everything else is a Mark 1, you know, with this cork bottle design and that Mark 1 rear end. But anyway, I still do like them. Let's just zoom in a little bit further. It is a lovely example and always when you see these in pristine brand new condition they always look you know you always take a second look because i think for a van actually they're a not a bad looking vehicle at all lovely photography showing this blue car throughout and if i look in the color chart that i just showed you then from again march 75 it's telling us this color is called olympic blue i don't think it really suits it the color color available considering it's a van is actually very nice and then you like you could also get it just as a primer and then possibly paint it whatever your company's color scheme was i think was the idea but anyway let's open the brochure up and have a look a bit more inside and then we open it up and there's lots of more of really beautiful pictures like i say another reason i really like this one the not in, in all brochures the photography isn't always the best sometimes it's reprinted it goes a bit blurry but this is actually a really nice clear images it's a well put together little brochure and like i say for 75 in incredibly good condition it's also you start thinking oh is it just like a you know a four-sided piece but it's a little bit more than that you know a little bit of flap and more lovely images I should also mention Take Two Tuesday, like I say, it's having a second shot at these brochures. The first time we looked at this brochure, um, it got 173 views and 18 likes, and it made 50 cents. So, let's see if we can do it a little bit better. One of the things we can do, can do now, and we couldn't do that, is zoom in. So we are going to zoom in on these pictures and have a look at some of this text and finally see what it's actually talking about. And of course, zooming in, we can have a look at these pictures far nicer. When I did it originally, it was just simply, I took a picture on the floor, put that up on the screen and talked about it. So 
I think it's a little bit nice. You know, we've got a bit better quality as we've kind of like learned to YouTube, really, because I didn't have a clue when I first started. Anyway, let's start up here. It says Escort 30 and Escort 45, a new generation of light delivery vans. Let's start up here. So here it is. It says it's always a big news when Ford introduces something new. And the big news is good news for delivery men. The new Ford Escort vans arrive with a distinguished pedigree. Plus, lots of load space in the back. The maximum payload of the Escort 30 van, depending on weight distribution, is up to £818. And the new Escort 45 van takes it up to £1,087. Up front, the sleek styling is both new and practical. Notice the one-piece plastic radiator grille, reducing the risk of stone chipping. The bumper-mounted front direction indicator lamps, the black painted wiper arms and blades, and the new style wheels with plastic capped wheel nuts. So it's kind of like telling you all the updates, which really doesn't add to very much really. But let's continue reading. Drive one as hard as you like. You'll be repaid with performance, economy and reliability day after day. Because under the bonnet, we've given you the same rugged, reliable engines and mechanical systems that have already proved themselves over millions of motoring miles in the Ford Escort saloons, or the famous Ford Escort saloons, I should say. Technical improvements include new type... Front McPherson struts that incorporate the steering arm to reduce the number of parts and make servicing easier. As for the driver comfort and convenience, standard features include face level ventilation, an instrument cluster module with integrated warning light systems and three stalk controls on the steering column to operate lights, horn direction indicators, two speed windscreen wipers and electrically operated windscreen washer. By specifying either the 30 or 45 custom van, you can get even more, so basic and then a, a custom version with extras, I guess. Uh, standard features like luxuriously trimmed seats, a full width parcel shelf, a dipping interior rear view mirror, chrome front and rear quarter bumpers, front overriders, uh, hazard warning flashers, reversing lights and halogen headlights. In fact, these images are for the custom version. Moving further down, it tells us these new Ford vans are designed to transport whatever you need from one place to another. Quickly, safely and reliably. Your problem will be deciding which is best for your light hauling work. The Escort 30 with the 1100 engine or the Escort 45 with a 1300cc engine, a two-piece drive shaft, bigger tyres and a heavy duty rear suspension. Both models give you a further choice, either the economical low pressure engine or the more powerful high compression version will deliver the sort of performance you're looking for. Whichever you choose, the Ford van you collect will deliver everything you choose it for. Load space, operating economy, performance and years of trouble-free running. Adventure in space. Load space area is nearly six, six foot long, front to back. 38 and a half inches high, top to bottom and has a load capacity of 72 cubic feet. The rear doors open wide, free of obstructing hinges, and the fuel pipe and low level wheel arches are well to the sides, leaving a clean, uncluttered interior for easy loading. And then of course we can zoom in now so we can have a look at those sorts of rear doors. And like I say, I think it really suits this Olympic blue colour. I think I possibly would have gone for this one also. A little, bit of a little bit of a side shot there showing that this is the 1.3 litre version. Lots of nice chrome, nice chrome bumpers there, front and rear chrome door handles, chrome mirrors. 
all looks pretty good I think. A little bit of a side shot, I'm, very few brochures have so many images, particularly for a commercial vehicle, it is quite surprising. They've really gone to the trouble of, you know, obviously getting a photographer, getting this like event all together and getting as many pictures as they possibly could. But of course this is the new Ford Escort van, so I guess they went to a lot of trouble of, you know, really promoting these. We get a couple more images of these tiny, tiny little images and then it shows us a look at that dashboard and rather nice looking steering wheel. Pretty basic, lots of blanking plugs of course, no radio, no rev counter, but you know what? For the 70s, I don't think you really expected much from a van, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of the 60s vans were absolutely horrendous and you know, the transit really turned the game around. But So you didn't really expect a lot, but... I think you got what you needed in this van and it looked good and it print pretty good for what was a van after all. A glimpse inside of those super basic seats and about as little of a door card as they could possibly put on that door. But this is what it's all about, isn't it? This is what you're buying it for putting things in and look at the size of those TVs um, this is very unusual this is a little locking mechanism it's got on there it's got these nice little chrome um, bumpers on the rear this is going to be the custom model um, we've also got these sort of rear lights on the back there so that's an interesting one so this is the 45 custom um, interesting number plate it's the same van in all the pictures no 823N, an interesting plate. And then I just pulled the uh, camera back again. This even smaller text, if you notice, they went for a really small text here for whatever reason. I'm not going to read all that. It's just kind of like waffle, really. You know, it handles like a dream, etc., etc. But like I say, you could, in fact, make the brochure even bigger and get an even nicer picture. We'll start with the rest of this, which really follows on from here. So it starts with giving some uh, dimensions to the van and says depending on your business the interior layout is ideal for fitting shelves, racks, drawers, hooks or lockers to accommodate virtually every category of goods from foodstuff to fashions. Pedigree engines and transmissions, the Ford Escort series of engines have a cross floor cylinder head, ball in piston combustion chambers and five bearing crankshafts. Millions of miles of tough motoring have proven their reliability beyond doubt. 1100 or 1300 cc in high or low compression versions mean you get the performance you want coupled with a long trouble free life. A floor mounted short stick gear shift with synchro mesh on all four forward gears and a lightweight diaphragm clutch ensures the positive smooth operation synonymous with all Ford vehicles. An automatic option, keeping tight delivery schedules, especially in city driving conditions, is tiring work. The driver has to keep going all day as well as the van. To make his work load easier, Ford offer automatic transmission as an optional extra with the 1300 engine vans. By reducing strain and improving driver efficiency, Automatic transmissions could pay you handsomely, so handsome dividends in the long run. Automatic options on these vans, I'm sure it wasn't that popular. After all, most businesses really don't care about the driver too much. I'm sure it was quite nice, you know, in the cities with an automatic, although I'm sure the economy suffered and, you know, you had to pay more for the van. So, unsurprisingly, I don't think... I certainly think it would be rare today to find an automatic version of these vans. Straight line braking. The Escort 30 van has a dual line brake system with 8 inch drum brakes all round. While the Escort 45 has 9.7 inch discs on the front and servo assistance all round. Even in wet weather and with a full load on board you get firm straight line stopping. Not sure about that drum brakes all around how great that would have been with a full load to be honest with you but it's telling us it's fine 
Uh, positive rack and pinion steering provides a tight 29.3 foot turning circle, handy for nipping in and out of parking spaces other vans might tend to ignore. Smooth riding over rough surfaces. The front suspension is based on a system of independent coil springs with telescopic damper struts plus semi-elliptical rear suspension springs with double acting telescopic shock absorbers. The Escort 45 is fitted with a heavy duty rear suspension. It all adds up to years of smooth riding over even the bumpiest of roads. And then it ends by telling us the Escort van's good looks don't cost extra. A delivery van is a functional vehicle, but that's no reason why it shouldn't be easy on the eye, especially as the look of your van can help in projecting the right public image for your business. Perhaps that's why so many Britain's biggest companies and one-man businesses choose Escort vans consistently. The combination of good looks, load capacity, proven performance, reliability and ready availability of forward after sales service solves a great many transport problems. It could solve yours as well for many years to come. Then we get this rather lovely large shot which I've zoomed straight into. I mean it talks about longevity and you know reliability. One thing it doesn't mention is rust protection. Maybe that should have been something they might have been thinking about a bit more because I never thought Fords in the 70s were pretty good at that. They were, they were, you know, and it's not just Ford, a lot of 70s cars really suffered with rust. And I think more, probably rust was probably the killer for most of them. I'm sure most of them ended up in the scrapyard for rust issues than anything else, to be honest with you. And they liked to rust after a few years, you know, certainly. Rust protection wasn't really on just the forefront of Ford's mind at the time. And look how nice they look when they're rust free. And of course, a commercial vehicle certainly isn't going to be looked after quite as well as you know, your one owner Ford Escort that your mum drove around. But anyway, same model again, look, same number plate. Loading a wedding cake into the back of your Escort. Do you think that's going to survive? Come on. It's not that smooth, right? It's not a Citroen, for goodness sake. So that's a little bit of an unusual little demonstration of the van, but that's what they went for, so you know, good luck to them. Anyway, let's move to the back page. So to get to the back page, we have to obviously fold all these back, so I apologise for sticking my big arm in there. And fold it to the front, and then flick it around there we go we get that so this is all your specifications and um, sort of i'm sure the options will be on there yeah the options are on there as well they're always interesting to to look at and then don't forget we're going to be coming back to the color chart in a moment let's start with the specifications i'm not sure i'm going to read it all because you find with 70s brochures they go into a lot of detail so we'll probably not read everything on here but certainly we'll pick the key points out Okay, specifications for so the model it starts talking about first is the Escort 30. All steel integral construction with safety glass all round. Primer finish, remember, the base model just came with standard with a sort of a grey vinyl, a grey primer finish, which we'll have a look later on. Steel load compartment floor, twin rear doors with large to fix windows, exterior locks on driver's passenger and rear doors, spare wheel housing. The passenger seat, a nine gallon fuel tank, load space capacity is 72 cubic feet. So overall, these were very basic vans, but certainly the most basic of them all, just an Escort 30 that wasn't the custom was very short on things, pretty much as little as, or as, as little as they can get away with is pretty much what they was going for. It does, of course, keep the price down and certainly for a small business, every penny is really going to matter so i was talking about the weights on there it then tells us the engine is an 1100 cc ohv either a high compression or low compression engine 
uh, comes standard with a four speed gearbox uh, but it has got synchro mesh on all four gears which is nice for what it is um, drum brakes all round which may be a little bit dodgy when it's fully loaded but says it's going to be perfect rack and pinion uh, like a rack and pinion system for the steering turning circle 29.3 feet curb to curb Suspension is a front independent coil springs, telescopic damper struts, rear is semi-elliptical springs with double action telescopic shock absorbers. Exterior equipment, two circular sealed beam headlights with integral side lights, separate direction indicators, twin tail light assemblies incorporating direction indicators, rear lights, brake warning lights and reflectors, Rear number plate illuminated li illumination light, silver painted front bumper and rear quarter bumpers, uh, aluminium scuff plates, matte black windscreen wipers, push button door locks, door mounted rear view mirror, styled road wheels, and then the interior equipment. I'm going to read this just because it's quite a long list, but it's pretty basic stuff, really, just to show you how basic these vans were. So, a black padded fascia incorporating speedometer, odometer, fuel gauge, and water temperature gauge, warning lights for alternator, oil pressure, main beam, and direction indicators, two spoke steering wheel, ignition steering column lock, column mounted three stoke control system operating direction indicators, main and dip beam, headlight flasher and horn, electrically operated windscreen washers, two speed windscreen wipers, side lights and headlights, choke control, two speed heater, demister blower with illuminated controls, air or floor ventilation with face level eyeball vents, individual slide mounted front bucket seats, full cab headlining, interior rear view mirror, two padded sun visors, vinyl upholstery and door trim panels, parcel shelf, ashtray and fascia, manually operated courtesy lights, interior bonnet release, inertia reel seat belts, extra cost. So the next model up from that very base Escort 30 van is the Escort 30 custom van. So the specification is similar to that for the basic Escort 30 model with the following exceptions. Gloss paint, you can now get some gloss paint on there. Uh, two circular halogen headlights, reversing lights, chromed front bumper. So instead of it just being painted silver, it's now chromed. Uh, front bumper and rear quarter bumpers. Front overriders, bright whisker moldings and badge on grill hazard warning flashes custom badging and then the custom spec adds on top of the basic model by giving you luxury trimmed front seats and door trim panels full width front parcel shelf interior dipping rear view mirror so you know still not a luxury vehicle but you get the bare minimum what you think anyway next model is up to that is the escort 45 non-custom uh, specification similar to the basic Escort 30 model with the following exceptions body telling you more heavy duty basically and you get the 1300 uh, standard now OHV high compression or low compression dual line brake system so we now got front disc brakes at least I'm sure that made a big difference uh, different radio ply tyres and as with the Escort 30, you can Escort 45 as the custom version. Tells you similar to the basic Escort 45 with the following exceptions. Exterior equipment. It's telling us all the same sort of things added on as you got with the 30 custom, but you know, with these um, different tyres. And then the interior equipment, the same as what you got for the Escort 30 custom van. It then goes on to tell you about servicing and then the engine specifications in this little box so that 1100 or 1098 cc engine maximum bhp 48 at 5500 revs uh, 0 to 60 time wait for it 27.8 seconds 30 to 50 time 19.1 seconds and a maximum speed of 79 
Probably worth going for the 1300 or a 1298cc engine with its 57 bhp at 5500 revs. No 60 time, it's not exactly a fast vehicle, though still only 24.8 seconds. 30 to 50, 17.5 seconds, maximum speed 83, so not a huge difference, but I'm sure every little bit counted when you're talking about those speeds. And then it talks about the options, which are quite amusing. The first option there is to have hazard flashes. Standard on the custom model, but you could option it on the base van as well. Laminated windscreen option on them all. Roof ventilator option on them all. Gloss paint finish. Standard on the custom, of course, but you could have a gloss paint if you paid a bit extra for your base model. Fabric seat trim option. Push button radio option. Uh, halogen headlights, standard on the custom. You could option it for your base model. Servo assisted disc brakes. Um, standard on your 45 vans you could get those servo assisted brakes on the smaller van as well the 30 and then finally automatic transmission with the 1300 option for them all and then the rest is pretty much all waffle it continues to talk about servicing it tells you remember forward prices include delivery um, the usual thing in a brochure telling you know, anything can change at any time uh, Ford Personal Import Export Limited. Inertia real seat belts in accordance with statutory regulations. Front seat belts are fitted. These are supplied at extra cost. So it's like saying, you know, we now have to fit front seat belts, but we're still going to charge you more for that. Rather weirdly. And then right at the bottom here, it does give us that date so they're published by the car merchandising department ford motor company limited brentwood essex effective march 1975 we've also got a little bit of a code for this brochure of fa222 and we also of course don't forget we've got that color chart which is also dated march 1975 so here it is, and it's obviously always been in this brochure because it is in pristine condition, amazingly enough. So the new Ford Escort Van Colour Guide, effective March 1975, and little Ford badge. So if we flip that over, we do, in fact, get those lovely colours. So let's just zoom in a little bit further, I think. So the first one up is Cactus Grey Primer. And that's the colour you would got, and only colour you would have got for your very base non-custom model if you didn't want to pay extra for paint. You could still get the other colours, but you would have had to pay extra for the other sort of gloss paint colours. So Cactus Grey Primer would have been the van that would have arrived that you ordered just the standard van. I guess they did that because, you know, a lot of these could have been going to... Um, businesses that had a particular colour that it was going to spray in afterwards although I'm sure like sort of like sole businesses you could have ordered it and just kept it in cactus grey and then put sort of like your words for your business on there and kept it as cheap as possible because like I said every penny costs when you're a very small business making like a little market business or the like but an interesting one I wonder if there's any that still survive the basic ones in Cactus Grey Primer. That would be an interesting one. Strangely, I actually hate cars in grey. Grey cars, I really do not like. You know, they're all modern cars, aren't they? Grey now. But having said all that, it would be very nice to have a very basic one with that Cactus Grey Primer. But of course, other colours were available. And indeed, if you went for the custom, you didn't have to pay any extra for the other colours which were Diamond White, Royal Blue, Carnival Red, Olympic Blue, which actually looked really nice on this particular uh, car in this brochure, Daytona Yellow, which was always one of my favourite um, colours actually for the Ford range, although I don't think this colour chart does it any justice, it looks a lot nicer than that, Sahara Beige, Phoenix Orange, and modern green so some real great color choices to be honest with you a nice color range just considering this is a van 
you know, a fabulous colour range, I think, and, you know, I would have been happy with any number of those um, more interesting colours there, and like I say, Cactus Grey for that base model is interesting, even though I really don't like grey. Anyway, it tells us on here, there was a seat choice, I have the black vinyl, which is, I think is horrendous, but probably good for a van, because it certainly lasts a long time, or fabric you could get at an extra cost. Tells us Cactus Grey Primer is supplied as standard on Escort 30 and 45 van models. 30 custom and 45 custom models have gloss paint as standard. The usual waffle that it's on paper and isn't going to be exactly like that, but I think we're well aware of that, but gives us an idea. This is printed by CB Printers Limited, March 1975, reference number FA125. So there we go, the uh, Ford Escorts vans in 1975 for your Take 2 Tuesday. I always really like the Escort vans, I never owned one but I always looked at them and think I wouldn't mind owning one, I quite like them and my dad worked um, for British Gas and certainly a lot of their vans were little Escort vans weren't they in that sort of blue and white paint scheme but thank you so much for watching today, I do appreciate it. I'll probably do a link to the old uh, original video for this which you may want to have a look just to see and confirm the videos are getting better but thank you so much for watching today I'll just end by saying please do consider subscribing it is all completely free helps see the videos you want to see and I guess also see us slowly improve over time as we grow as a little YouTube channel you can become a member as well but I'll be completely honest we're not giving too much away for members it's a small fee it's more of an idea to you know help us keep producing these videos that's completely optional though I appreciate everyone who's become a member sorry I'm not really giving extra uh, videos at the moment but membership is so low because we're such a small channel that I really don't have the opportunity to give you more content at the moment but certainly as we grow get more members get more money coming in then I can certainly start giving you extra videos but if you are a member I'll certainly answer every one of your comments but thank you so much for watching today I do appreciate it as always I'll add a couple more boxes on this particular shot so you can click on to see more course like content but like I said thank you so much for watching please do take care we'll see you very soon and goodbye.